Hey guys, welcome back. Um, in this tutorial, I'll be going over my Human IK system, rigging this uh, little character here, this low polygon game character. Um, so let's get stuck into it. I'll be using the Human IK system to rig this character. Um, one of the beauties of the Human IK system is it's great for gaming and it's great for motion capture. Uh, for example, you can take your completed rig character um, into Motion Builder, which is another of uh, Autodesk products um, for mo motion capture related um, animation. Okay, let's kick this off with opening up the um, Human IK system. In Maya 2017, it's up the top right here. You'll see the little man second icon on the on the left click that and you're presented with the interface okay so what we're interested in here is the character at the moment it states it states none and if i drop down there's no character so we need to create the character skeleton so create we're interested in create skeleton first off um, create control rig we'll use that later on and what might be interesting too if you're interested is if you already have a character and it's already fully uh, you've got your joints in place you can go create custom rig mapping this one's important because then you are able to just um, link them up so one to one you would for example select the um, elbow joint and then in here you would click the elbow Okay, so you're connecting each one. That's using Create Custom Rig Mapping, which I will go over in another tutorial. Okay, so uh, let's go at the top here. We're interested in using um, Create Skeleton. We hit that, and there's our skeleton. Um, and I'll, I'm interested in straight up as bringing the root down. So by clicking on the, the root, the center here, the hips, I'll bring that down to my character's hip around the belly button, just below the belly button, about here. I'm going to go into the front view and now it's all about first you want to state how many uh, fingers, how many toes, how many in the spine and how many neck joints you want. I'll say two neck joints and I'll say for my character, um, I'll say four for the spine. And my character I believe has um, three fingers three fingers and a thumb so four so I'll get rid of the middle finger there we go and I'm gonna only say the big toe and just the one for the toes because he's just got a the um, shoes on I'm gonna bring these up because they've dropped a fair bit and by the way you only need to do the left side don't go ahead and do the left and the right side um, I'm just placing down these down to approximate Okay, so now the key to um, placing these joints, locating them, placing them, is you need to be in the definition tab up here. Okay, so once you've got your toe bones, your finger bones, etc., go into definition. And what's important, the key to this is keeping this green, the validation status. That needs to be green. All of these joints need to be green. If they turn orange, you need to undo and reposition them. So let's go through. I'll give you an example of one that changes color, uh, if I can. <laughs> there we go. It's turned orange. So I need to undo that. Okay. So let's go for it. Um, I'm just going to go through this process pretty quickly for the uh, for this tutorial but I'm just coming down th through each each joint placing them whoops okay and I'm using the up down arrow keys on my keyboard to go through each one that's the left foot there it was rather low okay still green great still green still green bring this up about here this will be the, the roll of the foot. And here's the toe. There. Okay, now I'll come up. Um, so of course yours will be slightly different because your character is going to be a different shape than mine. About to about there. Now I'm doing the clavicle. Now what's important with the clavicle is you come into the shoulder 
and it should be the clavicles the top of the shoulder area here around the, uh, the collarbone not over here on the shoulder but your collarbone now so it should be up fairly high now I'll do the shoulder and I need to bring the shoulder down like that so it's in line with the edge of the armpit not out here bring it right in here okay now this particular character he's sort of got this pear-shaped body so his arms are going to always be out on this angle here all right so take that into account as you're rigging your character think about the shape of your of the anatomy of your character okay it's still green great wrist whoop that's changed see that so I've got to take that back a bit okay that's green not too bad sometimes by the way you can hold D move the pivot point and you might get away with it that's a little tip if you are finding it quite difficult and you can always rotate whoop didn't like that either okay so maybe I'll bring it forwards way up here a little bit okay seems to be happy with that um, good okay let's move on now I'll place the fingers wrist and I'm just going to increase the size of these um, joints a little bit so as you guys can see them um, I could do this under display animation and joint size yeah like that but if you are um, aware of bonus tools Maya bonus tools it's worth downloading from the Autodesk site for free and then in here I've got one called display and then uh, display control if I hit control I think it's two there we go anim display here's my joint size here too so this is a additional add-on for Maya it's called bonus tools the other one I'd highly recommend I can hit control to the other one I highly recommend um, when you're rigging oh sorry when you're UV mapping inside by a bonus tools for a character bonus tools and then you come into UV editing and auto unwrap UV tools that's very powerful for um, and very intuitive for doing your um, UV mapping I'm going to turn on my uh, mesh so as I can see where I need to place these properly and I'm start looking inside here make sure my validation status is still green in my human IK looking good and down the end here now I'm just dropping these in roughly fairly quickly guys okay I'm looking from the top down view so that's not too bad and remember we're just going to mirror all these over to the other side shortly I'm going to rotate this one down a little bit that'll do and this one down a little bit too I'd normally spend about a few more minutes actually working on these just getting them placed right but there we go let's carry on okay there's my neck pull that one down a bit second neck there okay. and my head head I'll put in the middle of his head slightly forwards like that I don't place it up the top put it down in the very center okay great so that's the left side done now I simply come across back into my skeleton or oh, you've got this one here too this is mirror uh, sorry into the skeleton tab and go this is your mirror there we go now it's mirrored and just before I close this I want to move this one across but it go back to my definition just so it's in the center of the foot it's a bit better all right, then I'll mirror that across again using my mirror. 
Okay, so next up, we go back to our definition. We're going to tr create the uh, character control rig. To do this, we this is the next step in the process, by the way. Um, it's a three-step process um, workflow. You go skeleton, definition, and then controls. So re really, now we're going to create the controls. Inside the definition tab, click this one here, which is your uh, create control rig. Click that once. There we have it. There's the control rig. All the yellow joints are signifying um, your FK. And if you want IK, you click on this one here. There we go. And these are our controls on and off. Controls only. So now I should be able to I'll turn this one on, grab a control and move it about. Okay, fantastic. So now we're ready to move into the next process of binding, skin binding. To do this, we select our root, the root, remember, shift select your mesh. By the way, before you go binding anything in Maya, make sure you delete any history on your mesh. How can you check that? In your channel box, ensure you have no, um, you'll see a big list of, uh, of operations that you've done down in here. As long as that's empty, you're fine. You can also hit Alt Shift D. That deletes the history. So let's go for it. Grab the root, Shift select my character mesh, and I come up into rigging, which is F3, and I go skin, bind skin options. Under here, joint hierarchy, um, geodesic voxel, dual quaternion, and I make sure I set this one to four for influence. You can try five or six if you want, but I'd start out with four and change fall off to 0.25 and hit apply. I save the, re the resolution as 256. Okay, let's test it. So I should be able to grab one of these controls, and move it around, and my character is moving. Fantastic. He's already really nicely rigged there. I like that. Okay, and if you're interested, um, I'll quickly go over some of these controls for actual animation. So we actually animate using the, the control set up here. Here's my character, he's called character one, and I'm using this control rig that I just created. So, to animate using the human IK system, um, first you need to set up your animation properly. How do you do this? Come into your animation and to your sorry settings down here on the bottom right, the little running man. Change it to real time playback speed to 24 FPS real time. That's important. Then come up to the animation tab and ensure that new HIK curve default is set to independent Euler the same as the top one. These two should be the same. And then click Save. Why do we do this? Because, see how it says New Human IK Curve Default Rotation Interpolation. Well, I'll save that. Inside the Graph Editor, if you don't do that, you will not see the rotational values for each of these controls. Okay? You can still animate, but you won't see the uh, the rotational values so you won't be able to adjust the rotation values in the graph editor okay we're ready to animate normally when I create any animation I at least have a ground plane unless you're in space okay and then I would put my character into his first pose maybe I always bend the legs a little bit you should never really lock the the knees bring them down here hands down, try and have them asymmetrical, not exactly the same on each side. You don't want them mirrored because that just looks very unnatural. I'm going to tilt his head a little bit, maybe slightly forward a little bit, and I'd change those little fingers. By the way, inside here, um, in our um, human IK, these little ones here, this brings us into the, if you want to select the controls here for the fingers, bring it back out. So that's what those two little arrows are. Same with the feet. I've only got the one joint for the foot. Okay. What's also important up here is uh, here is our controls on off. Here is our FK on off and our skeleton on off. I don't need the skeleton, so I'll turn that off.
Um, when we move a control, I tend to use these two here. This is full body control. See, it's pulling the whole body. Okay. Whereas opposed to just this one here is just a single limb. Now I'm only moving the limb. Okay, I'll go back to full body for now and I'll put him back in the T-pose. Um, also what's interesting is I, I don't I very rarely use this one here which is just selection, single selection. Okay. These two are important, they're for they they look like little pins, little tacks. They're called for pinning, and if you notice his feet are pinned. So if I grab the torso, the hips, and move that down, see the feet are stuck on the ground? They're pinned to the ground, aren't they? If I click this one, his right foot, and unpin it. Now watch, watch what happens when I move the down. There, it's unpinned. So that's pinning. So I'll pin them again. Oops, better select it. Pin, pin. Both the translate and rotation are pinned. Okay, there's the, uh, moving back to the T-pose. This one here. Okay, also what is of interest to us, if um, you select outside, anywhere inside this pane, like clicking that, click it twice actually, once, twice there, you're selecting all the controls. So I always start off bringing up the blend, translate and blend, rotate all the way up so everything turns green. See it's half green, each control's half green, I'll just turn that off, half green in the translate and now it's full green. So we've got IK fully on here now. So they're all green, I'm ready to go. Okay, so I'm in full IK mode. All right, now to animate, it's a fairly simple process. Um, talking about the process, we go through three or four stages of animation. We go through what's called the um, uh, 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 the initial, po it's a pose to pose. Okay, so we do our key poses first, and then we move into the in-betweens, and then we move into the uh, doing your ease in, ease out, and your moving holds, etc. Then finally you move into your polishing. So you iterate on the same animation about four times over. Okay, so let's do a quick blocking pass here. Actually, I'll go through that in the next video um, where I actually animate the character. But for now, just be aware that you need to pose your character. And once you do have your character properly posed, however you wish to start out on frame one, you need to select everything, like clicking in here, and then hit key, S. S on the keyboard, you know, and it denotes one key. Then move to your next pose, um, uh, sorry, frame on your timeline, pose your character, however you want them to be. And then once you've got them in his, in the position that you, the key pose that you're trying to attain, then you come in here and select all of your keys again and hit S. So this way he moves there. He's going from one key pose to the next key pose. Okay, guys, thanks for watching.